Coming up on Focal Point, she answered questions for the first time since the Nassar sentencing. Judge Rosemarie Aquilina speaks out only to Michigan State journalism students. We sit down with the brother of a survivor from the Florida school shooting. Coming up on Focal Point, we'll find out just how much these floods are affecting Michigan State's campus. Focal Point starts now. The normally serene Red Cedar River that flows through Michigan State has turned into a monster. Hello everyone, I'm Chloe Keipel. And I'm Angel Thompson. It's the worst flood on campus since 1975. On the banks of the Red Cedar, more like in the banks of the Red Cedar, Michigan State's infamous Red Cedar River is rising to levels that is affecting everyone on campus. Focal Point's Kelly Sheridan has more. First came the snow, then the rain, and now the floods like no one has ever seen. I didn't realize it could be this bad. I mean, I feel like we're pretty much underwater here. <laughs> After the recent rise in temperatures and rainstorms that hit East Lansing this week, Michigan State is experiencing flooding that is surprising most students. It's crazy. Like uh, Matt Avinshine. It's at the library and it's uh, crossed over most of the paths. So it's the highest I've seen it since I've been here. Aaron President John Engler says this is the worst flooding that Michigan State has seen since 1975 when water levels rose to 12 feet. The National Weather Service says it's not done, but by the time it's over, it could reach those record numbers. The flooding is so extreme that Engler felt the need to explain it all in a press conference. That the flood plan has been kicked into gear. Um, one of the components of that plan are the flood barriers that are designed to protect the buildings along the river. Along with the 1,200 foot barrier, Several roads and sidewalks have been closed on campus. Take uh, different detours. Luckily, I'm able to, you know, get around some different areas of campus. So. Flooding is past the brink, but Angler hopes this flood of preparation will keep everyone dry. The team here has done an effective job of trying to prepare, and uh, with what we know about the weather and what we expect to know about the rain, we think we're in pretty good shape. In so. East Lansing, Kelly Sheridan, Focal Point News. Michigan State's Infrastructure Planning and Facilities Group has sent out several emails in regarding flood road closures and will continue to update the Red Cedar River flooding. While Florida shooting suspect Nicholas Cruz is charged with 17 counts of murder, students at the school in Parkland are demanding change. While the nation continues to mourn the victims and their families, survivors are calling on lawmakers to ban semi-automatic rifles, the kind of gun used in last week's killing spree. Thousands of protesters swarmed the Florida State Capitol chanting, vote them out. It also inspired high school students nationally to walk out in a show of solidarity. Noah Lieberman, a junior at Michigan State and graduate from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, was arriving to class here in Michigan when he learned of the shooting. His brother is a freshman there, and Lieberman was anxious to hear that he was okay. It was difficult. I mean, when I get a text from my brother saying he's okay, of course, I just think, thank God. But, I mean, then you think about everybody else and the rest of your community and how it's going to affect everybody, and it's just terrifying. Lieberman says his former high school could resume classes on Tuesday, and in an effort to get comfortable again, parents and students will be walking around the school on Sunday. Michigan State University J School students got a lesson in law and ethics from a special guest, Judge Rosemary Aquilina, known most recently for her presiding over the Larry Nassar sentencing, invited students to our courtroom for a very candid conversation. Focal Point's Caitlin DeLuca was in the courtroom and brings us more. Have for me. You haven't heard those words from Judge Rosemary Aquilina until now. And so I'm, I'm really pleased that it has moved the movement forward. Since becoming a viral sensation while presiding over Larry Nassar's Ingham County sentencing, this is the first we've heard from her. And I would have listened to a thousand more because it's that important. Aquilina, who has been tight-lipped about the case, opened up to Michigan State students. And what I saw were these wonderful girls, now women, who came in a little gray, a lot nervous, anxious, and as they started to talk and face him and me, it was very healing. But when you first read the letter that he wrote to you about this being too hard on him, what were your original thoughts and how did that make you feel? It, it, my stomach sank. So. And I think if you watch 
how I was on the record and what I said, that explains how I felt. Aquilina's emotions resonated with many, including Saturday Night Live host Natalie Portman. And that morning I woke up with everybody saying, I hope you watch Saturday Night Live, and everybody sent me the video. I was sleeping, I promise you. <laughs> Despite the newfound fame, she's still gracious to all her new fans. Now you each have your own gavels uh, to remember me by, so. Caitlin DeLuca, Focal Point News. Judge Aquilina is in the process of trademarking her name and plans on selling official t-shirts with all the money raised going to the survivors. Just a week into his tenure, MSU interim president John Engler has made moves to combat the school's issues of sexual assault. He made changes to the university's health athlete. colleges and Leverage explained two new appointments. Those appointments come on the heels of the university's mishandling of sexual assault claims against former MSU doctor Larry Nasser. Engler answered uh, questions about how the changes will help in sexual violence this on campus. Directly we have to focus on what we can do forward uh, to make sure that any patient who comes through our doors, and I said no wrong door, every door you walk through needs to be a safe door, every door you walk through needs to have quality care on the other side of the door waiting for you. Angler appointed Norman J. Beauchamp Jr. as the new Associate Provost and Assistant Vice President for Health Affairs, while Anthony Avellino was named new Assistant Provost for Student Health, Wellness, and Safety. MSU faculty are upset with the decisions the Board of Trustees have made and they are making their voices heard. Gabriella Galloway joins us now live from the Spartan Newsroom with details on what steps they're taking to voice their opinions. Chloe Angel, after a vote, the MSU Faculty Senate delivered a vote of no confidence in the MSU Board of Trustees. And although that vote was overwhelmingly in favor, not everyone agreed. I thought that the best time to start is months ago, and the second best time to start is today. The Michigan State faculty can't force board members out, but their voice could have an immediate impact. Here is the choice, A, no confidence, B, Confidence. The Faculty Senate voted 61 to 4 in an emergency meeting that it lacks confidence in the trustees. It comes in the wake of the Larry Nassar sex abuse scandal. The faculty overwhelmingly agree that the board is responsible for the crisis. We would like a board that is actually going to act as a check on a president and that we want a president who is going to devolve power back to the colleges and the departments. Shawnee Vickery is a professor in the business college. She was one of the four who voted against the no confidence vote. I think that it's very disappointing. Disappointing because she says the no confidence vote should be all about the women and what happened to the women, not about the fact that they weren't included in the decision of the appointment of the interim president. Frankly, I was quite disappointed by people saying this was the straw that broke the camel's back. I would think that clear thinking individuals would recognize that the last straw and the straw that would break the camel's back would be what happened to the young women and girls on this campus. The Faculty Senate will be giving a letter to the Board of Trustees with their voting results and will call for their resignation. <laughs> Questions and concerns are being welcomed by the at-large members of the MSU Steering Committee. Chloe, back to you. Thank you, Gabriella. Meantime, the Board of Trustees came together last Friday for their monthly meeting. The board extended football coach Mark D'Antonio's contract, then, in public comments, upset community members demanded change from the trustees in the wake of Nasser fallout. The culture of silencing has continued into the rebuilding of this university. The concerns of survivors are still being ignored, and the inclusion of others is cr in critical decisions moving forward has been disregarded. MSU hasn't actively looked for a president since 1913, but it is officially now. Simon was chosen without a nationwide search in 2005, and so was her predecessor, Peter McPherson, in 1993. The board says it wants students and faculty involved with the search. Coming up on Focal Point, a Marvel movie breaking box office records and breaking cultural barriers. And two international students break into the restaurant business, serving up a familiar dish.
The much anticipated Marvel movie Black Panther grossed more than $360 million in its first week. Local theaters were packed over the weekend. With a nearly all African American cast, many who came to the show discussed what a black superhero means to black culture. Popcorn popped. Tickets taken. A typical day at the theater. Fanta. But not for Pearl Johnson. I'm going to be very proud of our people. I think that we are going to turn out, and so that makes me happy. Pearl and her family came to the NCG Cinemas in Lansing to see the premiere of Marvel's Black Panther. It's an important film for Taylor Matlock. When this movie is celebrating like black excellence and I think it's going to be a really great movie and it's going to like, you know, show more of what we can do. Like being represented as powerful, intelligent and dynamic characters capable of anything. The film, which features a mostly black cast and director, is already selling out nationwide. First black superhero that we've had on this massive scale. They have so many things that they're selling over here um, with Black Panther um, products on it. There's so many other messages within the movie. Some fans are here for the opening because they love Marvel comics. I love the atmosphere and the ideas behind the Marvel movies, so I'm just a big fan of them. Others came because to them, it's more than a movie. It's a movement. We can direct films, that we can be lead actors and actresses in movies. Those are the things that are so important and why we're here. You have little black kids saying, I can be Black Panther, and I think that's powerful in itself. In Lansing, Angel Thompson, Focal Point News. Black Panther could become the best-reviewed live-action superhero movie of all time. The film could also set box office records. Two local businesses closed to make way for more apartments. Plus, MSU alum ESPN reporter Jamel Hill comes back to campus for a visit. What did she tell journalism students? Treasure Roberts joins us in the Spartan newsroom with those stories and more. Treasure? Angel, Chloe, yes, Michigan State alumna Jamel Hill talked about the convergence of race, culture, and politics in the sports media world during her recent visit. Hill is currently a writer and contributor to the ESPN Vertical, The Undefeated, and was a former host of SportsCenter and His and Hers alongside Michael Smith. The event was moderated by Comrades Dean Prabhu David with Q&A from students on what it's like to be such a prominent figure in the sports media world. You know, you have to learn the core of how to do this job. So to take all that and then eventually become a columnist, the reason I can be an effective columnist, and for that matter, an effective television, um, presence is because I've experienced all these things. Hill graduated from Michigan State in 1997 with a BA in journalism. The face of Grand River is changing again, one that's affecting two popular businesses. Focal Point's Deja Green has the details. Change is constant in East Lansing. This might be your last Georgios for a little while, right? Now, right? And in this case, change might be good in the end. Right now, Bittersweet. 7-Eleven and Giorgio's Pizza on Grand River and Bow Street closed at the end of January. We have been here for 15 years. Giorgio's owner, Vakis Nicolau, knows in those 15 years, they created a lot of pizzas. Is our chicken fajita? Yeah. And a big following. You know, they're a pretty well-established uh, brand. As you can see right behind me, Giorgio's is in its first stages of demolition. Out with the old and in with the new. The hub project is expected to have 11 stories of housing with first floor retail. Um, in the project itself, there's about 350 units of housing. It'll be studios, ones, twos, and some three bedroom units in the project. Planning and building development's rights or Tim Dempsey says in a market where housing is softening, this new project may be very attractive to students. Better rent, but it could be incentives, right? Getting that first month free or not having to pay as big of a security deposit. Beneficial for Giorgio's as well because they're coming back. It will be easy for them to walk down and come and have pizza. For now, Nacho is ready. Nicola will have to wait. Uh, it will be sad to not see all of these uh, regulars that have been coming in for a, a year or so. But one of the uh, negative things in order to be bigger and better. Sometimes facing adversity is a step you need to take to get to the next level. In East Lansing, Deja Green, Focal Point News.
If you're craving a slice of Giorgio's Pizza, their downtown East Lansing location remains open. While demolition is already underway, expect the new apartments and businesses to open sometime in the fall of 2019. The Chinese New Year is celebrating the Year of the Dog and its way to bring the community together locally. In Meridian Township, Chinese culture was shared in many ways, including activities for children, singing, and Tai Chi performance. Eric Lee shares what Chinese New Year means to him. Chinese New Year is often seen as a time of celebration. It's time, it's time to get together with your friends and family to celebrate. It's a time of uh, great joy. Lee plans on celebrating his Chinese New Year by donating to the Lunar New Year food drive. While college may be busy, two international students have found the time to add restaurant owner to their resume. Focal Point's Chloe Kaipo introduces us to two Spartans putting their classwork right into their business. If you walk through downtown East Lansing, you didn't pass any Southern cooking. It's like just Cajun flavor. Until I, now. Oh, we should, oh, we should open this in Michigan. Crab Hero offers Louisiana-style Cajun seafood. It's spicy. The cooks, not quite Southern Bells, but international students from China. Spicy makes us kind of like a sense of home. MSU advertising senior Hong Ji Zhao and recent hospitality alumni Yudi Chen are co-owners of the restaurant that opened in November. Uh, our major can like push us to do something related to the food and beverage industry. As something that I don't know, I try to ask my professor. They spent a year and a half planning the restaurant and did lots of experimenting with the menu until they finally got it right. We try it and we like it. But our flavor is kind of like very strong, kind of like sometimes I will say aggressive. <laughs> Running a business and keeping up with class isn't always easy. <laughs> to be honest, I'm very tired every day. But, I'm but for Yudi and Hong Ji, it's worth it. But I'm very happy. The best part, I will say, you can see something you build up and it actually works. In East Lansing, Chloe Keipel, Focal Point News. You can connect with Crab Hero on Instagram or the Chinese social media app, WeChat. Hong Ji and UD engage with their customers there. You can order food, see coupons, and message the owners right from the app. That's what's happening on campus. I'm Treasure Roberts, back to you in the studio. The men's basketball seniors played their last game at the Breslin Center. Ryan Cole joins us for the latest in sports. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at how the three seniors said their goodbyes. Ever wonder where courage comes from? Where one finds the strength to believe in solutions that seem impossible? It takes a Spartan's will to understand that by working together, we can solve the world's biggest problems, from renewable energy to fighting malaria. After all, if we don't do it, who will? Spartans will. Welcome back to Focal Point. I'm Ryan Cole. Michigan State men's basketball team entered this season with a list of goals similar to the 2000 National Championship team. The first goal, to win a Big Ten regular season title. The Spartans could clinch a share of that title with a win against Illinois on Tuesday. We start in the first half. Watch this scary move from Jaron Jackson. Spins inside, gets fouled, dunks it anyways. That's an NBA move from the future lottery pick. Spartans go up two. In the second, some good ball movement here. Josh Lankford finds senior Gavin Schilling, throws down the ferocious dunk, goes up nine. Later, Michigan State pulling away. Freshman Xavier Tillman works hard for the offensive board, gets it out to Cassius Winston. His three-pointer, nothing but net. Michigan State rolls over Illinois in an emotional senior night. The clock winds down and Tom Izzo makes the substitutions. Gavin Schilling, Ben Carter, Tum Tum Nair kiss the helmet in their final game at the Breslin Center. Michigan State clinches a share of the Big Ten title for the first time since 2012. After 40 minutes of basketball, the court gets pretty dirty. But on senior night, it's a Michigan State tradition. Sweat mixed with tears. A lot of emotions were running through my mind. You know, um, that's one thing that you know a lot of seniors have done in the past is, is kiss that Spartan head. For me to be able to do that just means a lot. A tradition for every senior basketball player to kiss the court. It's a blessing. It felt, it felt really special. Um, you know, the most special part was having my mom here. An emotional ceremony followed MSU's 20-point win over Illinois on Tuesday. I appreciate you guys for playing my heart. I wouldn't be the man I am today if you could play every single person. 
Ben Carter, Gavin Schilling, and three-year captain Tom Tom Nairn played their final home game as a Spartan. It was great. Like I said, it was very emotional just because we could send the seniors out, right? And, and everything that we've been through this year, it, it was, I'm happy that, that we could do that for them and for the fans. But it may have been the last game for sophomore Miles Bridges and freshman Jaron Jackson, but for different reasons. If I, if I look ahead, then I'll start playing bad in the current games that I'm playing in. I just want to... Stay, stay focused on the task at hand. The team's two biggest stars are projected as lottery picks in the upcoming NBA draft. I was just thinking about winning. That's, that's really the only thing that was on my mind, and that's going to be on my mind for the rest of the season. But this night wasn't for them. It belonged to the seniors. Those guys don't want to leave, you know, and if, if I could do that and end the game and just keep them there, I probably would. At the Breslin Center, I'm Michael Epps, Focal Point News. Spartans look to win the Big Ten title outright for the first time since 2009 with a win at Wisconsin on Sunday. Just a day later, the Spartan women look to go out with a senior day victory of their own against Wisconsin. It was a classic back and forth Big Ten battle. Ten ties and ten lead changes in this one. First quarter, an offensive rebound here from Taya Reimer who puts it back up, lays it in for two points to tie it up at four. Then to the second, a senior connection here. Lexi Gussert finds Reimer for another two. She had nine on the day. To the third quarter, with the shot clock running down, senior Brandy Agee goes with the spin cycle, banks it in to tie it at 32. Agee had 13 points, 14 rebounds as the Spartans pulled away in the end to win on senior day, 69 to 61. Focal Point's Angel Thompson has more from the Breslin Center. I talked to seniors Taya Reimer and Brandy Agee after the game, and they stressed how they were more than teammates. This team was more like a family. Definitely emotional, I think that you know, it's a lot of us seniors, and we're all really close. So, um, you know, we have been talking about this year and then this moment. And, uh, it hadn't really hit any of us, but I think that it all kind of just hit. When you've been a part of something for so long, you know, you just it's a part of you. It helps grow who you are as a person, and I think that's what it means to be a Spartan for life. Spartans conclude their regular season Saturday at Purdue. Tip-off is set for 2 p.m. And those around MSU hockey say that first year uh, under head coach Danton Cole has been a success, changing the culture of the program in such a short amount of time. After winning on Friday, the Spartans played their final home game of the year Saturday against Penn State. Senior night for Ed Minnie, Carson Gatt, and Dylan Pavlik as they kissed the ice before the game. To the opening period, MSU down 1-0. Brody Stevens intercepts the pass, and he's on a fast break. Scores that wrist shot, his second goal in as many games, ties it up at 1. Penn State scored two unanswered goals to make it 3-1. to one. And now in the third, Patrick Kordorenko gets this shot past Penn State goalie to cut it down to one. Spartans couldn't get another goal on the board, though, so they fall to 16th-ranked Penn State 3-2. to two. After the game, the seniors reflected on their time at Michigan State. You blink twice, and next thing you know, it's senior year, and blink three times, it's the end, last home game. So it was, uh, it was a pretty emotional night for all three seniors, uh, but it was really enjoyable. You see the other guys go through it uh, three years before, and you're like, well, eventually that's going to be me, and then keep on pushing back the day <laughs> until, until it's finally here. Spartans head to fifth ranked Notre Dame this weekend. The Irish have already clinched first place in the Big Ten. And that's all we have for sports. I'm Ryan Cole. Ten hours of dancing, entertainment, and most importantly, donating took place at this year's Spartathon, Michigan State's Dance Marathon. The nonprofit raises funds for children and young adults at the Cassie Hines Shoes Cancer Foundation and the Sparrow Children's Center. The group raises money for, with different fundraising events throughout the year and allows registered dancers to create relationships with the families who, be, who will benefit from the donations. All leading up to their main event where they step into the shoes of the kids and stand on their feet for 10 hours in this yearly marathon. Families from Sparrow Hospital come and tell their stories. So the kids actually that we're fundraising for get to interact with the students, which kind of makes our event unique um, from all the others, just because we get to really interact with the kids that we're fundraising for. This year, the MSU Dance Marathon raised over $36,000. And that's our show for tonight. I'm Chloe Keipel. And I'm Angel Thompson. We leave you now with Michigan State's concert band. Good night. <laughs>